Hello and welcome back to Let's Code an Indie Game episode 17. This is the series where we learn the tools and techniques needed to get started with indie game development. In this episode we're going to start working on the code for collisions between entities in our game. But first, let's take a quick look at what we did last time. Okay, so if we just open up um, our main file and run the game, the big change we made last time was preventing our slimes from walking on the wall. So now if I, oops, a bit too slow, if I run around a corner quickly, we can see that our slimes actually get stuck um, on the corner until they can start following me again. And if we just take a quick look at the code, most of that was inside of the follow player uh, module, which was inside of our um, logic AI movement. And uh, the main change we made in our code was we pushed a lot of the coordinate translation into our room class so we can just use the uh, world coordinates when we check whether a room is walkable or not. And this is very similar to uh, how we did the movement for our player as well, so if you'd like to see a more detailed uh, explanation of how this works, uh, go back a couple of episodes and check out how we dealt with the player movement, because uh, we went into this in a lot more detail. Okay, so on to collisions. So the way we're going to handle collisions in our game, at least to start with, is by using bounding boxes. And bounding boxes are just uh, rectangles or boxes if you're in 3D, but we're going to try and keep our collision code to 2D just because it's a bit simpler. Um, these are boxes or rectangles which surround an area on the screen, and if the rectangles end up overlapping, then we know that a collision has occurred. So to start with, we're going to create a class to represent rectangles. So let's make it inside of math. So new file, and we will call this rectangle.lua, unsurprisingly. Um, and we'll start out by creating an empty table called rectangle and returning it inside of our new file. So this will sort of create the, uh, the module for us. And then onto rectangle, we can add a create method. Oops. And, and inside of our create method, we'll just make an empty table uh, called instance and return the instance. And this will be the actual instance of our rectangle. So what does our rectangle uh, need in order to be a rectangle? So in our world or in our game, it needs an X coordinate, a Z coordinate, a width and a height. So the reason we use X and Z is because we want our collisions to work sort of on the floor. So we want to say if two entities occupy the same floor space as each other, then we will uh, we'll consider that to be a collision and we'll deal with things like height and jumping separately. Okay, so let's go ahead and attach these to the instance. So instance.x equals x, instance.z equals z, instance.width equals width, and instance.height equals height. So we have our rectangle. Um, it doesn't have any behavior yet, but let's go ahead and wire it up to our entities. So inside of our entity class, in the create method, let's say that for every entity we create, we want to add another property onto that entity called bounding box. And, sorry, bounding box, there we go. And this is just going to be a rectangle.create. And we can use the x and z values which are passed into our create method. And for the width and height, we can use our sprite. So the uh, width will be sprite.image uh, get width, sorry, not get height, get width. And the height will be sprite.image get height. And we might come back to this later to, um, to do a bit of tidying up and a bit of fine tuning. But that should be enough to create a rectangle as long as 
as long as we pull in our rectangle code. So let's at the top do local rectangle equals require source math rectangle. And this will pull in our rectangle module. Uh, let's just run the code, check that nothing is broken. Good, everything still works. So the next thing we'll do is let's actually draw our bounding box if we are in debug mode. And the reason we're doing this is because it's very difficult to think about how our collisions work if we can't see the bounding boxes. So we already have this nice if statement in our draw method, uh, which uh, you know just checks if we're in debug mode and then writes the x, y, and z coordinates of our um, of our entity next to the entity. So let's add another line here love.graphics.polygon so a polygon is just um, a shape with uh, a number of uh, points which all connect up I guess so um, I suppose it's uh, it's probably easier to demonstrate but a, a rectangle um, is an example of a polygon and because of our coordinate system we can't just draw a rectangle because it may be uh, sloped so the way this works is we first of all pass in a drawing mode, just like with our rectangles uh, when we've drawn them previously. So we're just going to say we want a line um, and that will just draw the outline of the shape. And then we pass in a table of points. And love is smart enough to, um, if we pass in just an array of points here, love is smart enough to understand um, which ones are x coordinates and which ones are y coordinates because it just takes them in groups of two at a time and assumes the first one will be an x, the second one will be a y. So the way we get these is uh, we call self.boundingbox um, and we'll call the getPoints method which of course doesn't exist at the moment um, on our rectangle class and we can uh, just show that it doesn't exist by if we turn debug mode on and run our game uh, we get a nice error message saying attempt to call method get points a nil value and I always uh, I like to check that I'm getting the failure I'm expecting to get because that means um, I'm in a good place to add new behavior to the code if I um, if I got a different error message there it would mean that uh, there was a difference between what was actually happening and what was going on in my head and if that's true you don't you don't want to be adding new code at that point you just want to be fixing what that difference is but at the moment it seems like we understand what's going on so let's go ahead let's go ahead sorry let's go ahead and um, add our get points method so local get points equals function and uh, I'm just going to wire it up onto our instance before I forget so get points equals get points okay so Oh, and of course we need self because this is going to be an instance method, so we want to access the rectangle that called it. So how is get points going to work? Well, we need to do a couple of things. First of all, we need to convert um, the world coordinates to screen coordinates for the uh, corners of our rectangle because the a polygon or the polygon method is expecting the points which uh, correspond to the corners of the shape we want to draw. Um, then we need to put those points into, uh, or put, yeah, put the points uh, into a table, and then we need to return the table. So, step one convert world coordinates to screen coordinates for corners of rectangle means we will need our vector. Um, module. So let's require that source.math.vector and we can use our world to screen method. So starting with the top left point we can say vector dot and uh, we need to remember to use the dot here rather than the colon because vector is a module. Um, world to screen x is going to be self.x 
um, and this is for the top left corner so x will be self dot x y will be zero and this is because we are just checking the floor and the floor of our game is uh, y equals zero and z will be self dot z so this should take in a vector um, an x y and z vector in three coordinates and return us a x and y vector in two coordinates which is where the 3d coordinate maps to our screen so top right uh, this will be uh, world to screen self dot x and uh, we just add the width so self dot x plus self dot width Uh, y will be uh, y equals 0 and z will be self dot z okay and uh, bottom left will be oops, vector world to screen and here x will be a uh, self dot x y will still be 0 and z will be self dot z plus i think plus self dot height i'm wondering if i've got the bottom and top uh, mixed up but for the purposes of what we're doing i'm not sure it matters so let's carry on we'll find out if we are wrong or if i'm wrong uh, i'm born writing the code we'll find out if um, i'm wrong soon enough and finally bottom right is going to be vector world to screen self dot x plus self dot width um, y will still be y equals zero and self dot z plus self dot height there we go even if it is wrong it is better to be consistently wrong um, okay uh, let's just neaten up this indent that indent that indent that and indent that there we go so convert world chords to screen chords done put points into table and return the table so let's return an empty table Okay, um, and now let's actually add something into our table. So this really just needs to be a list of coordinates um, going x, y, x, y, x, y, x, y. So we'll start with the top left, and uh, we'll say top left dot x, and then top left dot y, then we can say top right dot x, top right dot y, and this is because our vector method um, or our world to screen method returns um, a 2D vector with X and Y properties which we can just access. So bottom left dot X and bottom left dot Y and bottom right dot X dot Y. There we go, let's uh, see what happens. Okay, attempt to perform arithmetic on field Z, A nil value, uh, vector line 24, and this is coming from rectangle line 15. Let's uh, check it out quickly. Line 15. self dot x plus self dot width um, y equals zero oh and uh, z equals self dot z plus self dot height okay so now we have um, something on our screen so a couple of things to note i'll just move the uh, player and the slimes out of the way uh, so first of all, we are drawing um, our points in a strange order, which means they come out looking like hourglasses rather than rectangles. So we can just flip um, our points around, and that should fix it. And uh, secondly, our rectangles do not move. So let's uh, fix both of those. 
because we want our rectangles to um, be attached to our entities. So to start with, let's swap our bottom left and bottom right coordinates around. Try again, much better. Okay, now let's um, update our rectangles. So all we need to do here is create an update method. Update is a function, takes self as an argument, and we just want to say, well, it would be handy if we also had an x and y value to, um, or sorry, an x and a z value to update. Then we can just say self.x equals x and self.y equals y. So then inside of our entity, we can just make sure that when we update our entity down here, we also want to update our bounding box. So bounding box update, and this just takes self.x and self.z. Let's see if that works. Attempt to call method update a nil value. Okay, so that's because on our rectangle we need to make the update method available on the instance. So our, um, our rectangle is updating in one direction, but not the other. Let's uh, take a look at that. Oh, that's just because I'm updating uh, Y instead of Z. So let's, uh, let's try that. There we go, much better. Okay, so the next thing to look at is our bounding box is... Um, doesn't exactly line up with our entity at the moment. So how can we fix that? Well, when we create our rectangle, we can um, center it just like we try to center our sprites. So given a width and a height, we probably want to minus the width and the height from our bounding box, but we're going to need to do this every time it updates. So let's just store an x offset, which is equal to width over two. And we'll make sure we uh, store that above our x and z positions and also an Z off or a Z offset, which is equal to height over 2. And then we can make sure we minus the X offset from X and the Z offset from Z. And we need to do that when we set the values initially and also when we update the values. Self dot X offset and self dot z offset. Okay, so our bounding boxes now match up pretty well with our entities. So there's some more fine tuning we can do around, um, we'll probably shrink the bounding boxes slightly and uh, make sure they match up, you know, match up much more uh, neatly with where our entities are. But as a starting point, uh, We've got pretty far this episode, so I shall wrap up here. Next time, we'll actually add a test for when the rectangles overlap and um, make something happen so we can check all of that code is working. Hope you're enjoying the series and that this is useful. Um, if you are enjoying it, remember to like and subscribe. It really does help out a great deal. Thanks for watching, and I shall see you next time. Bye for now.